Hey everybody, this is Vanessa from Alpiscast. Welcome back to the Fireplace series. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on projects. We're gonna create our project entity and table. After that, we're gonna add a new route to display projects in Fireplace. So let's get started. So first up in our list today is to create our project entity and the corresponding migration so we can build our table. We're gonna run an Alpis command to do that. So let me open up the terminal and I'm using IntelliJ by the way. And we're gonna say Alpis make colon entity. And then the name of the entity, which in our case is project. And you wanna use the singular version of your noun here. Alpis will pluralize it for the table. And then we're gonna say dash dash migration. So that way Alpis will migrate, so that way Alpis will create a migration for us for this table. Okay, great, and it finished successfully, so let's check out what it did. So we're expecting it to have made a migration and an entity, so let's look at that. So remember, for migrations, we're gonna go to database slash migrations, and look, there's a new migration in here. You can see that when the mi migration runs, it's going to create a table called projects. And when we roll back a migration, it will drop the table called projects. So let's see what this project is, because that's also new. So this is our entity and the table that goes along with it. You can see that Alpis added three fields for us already to our entity. ID, created at, and updated at. And we want all of those. Um, there's a slight change I want to make, though. So I want to get rid of this nullable for now and use this function called useCurrent. So that's just going to make it so I don't actually have to set the time when I'm um, inserting a new element into our database. So I want to use use current. The rest of that looks good. Thinking about projects though, there's a couple other fields that I know we're going to want. Specifically, project should have a title, a description, notes, and an owner. So let's add those fields now. save time, I'm just going to copy and paste these in, um, but it's pretty straightforward. Most of them are string types, notes is nullable, and then this is kind of interesting. So a project has an owner, and we're actually saying the owner is of type user, which is our user object from the last lesson when we added authentication. So now we need to actually map those to the columns in a database. And then you'll see a bunch of red, and that's because I just need to import a few things into this um, file. So I'm going to let IntelliJ do that for me. Okay, and like I mentioned, most of these are pretty normal. An interesting one, though, is this owner ID belongs to users. So ozone... Ozone and KTORM makes it easy to retrieve an entity along with its um, relatives without having to worry about left and right joins. So that's what you're seeing here. Now, whenever a project instance is fetched from the database, a left join will be used to fetch its user as well. So that's pretty handy. This looks good now. These have This has all the fields I want. We can actually run our migration. So we're just going to do an Alpis migrate. All right, and that was successful. Let's check out our database. Going to refresh this and we have a projects table. Awesome. So and also just side note, we have a new entry in our migrations table because we ran another migration. So that makes sense too. Next step is to add a controller so that way we can have some routes to display and create projects. We're going to use an Alpis command again to generate our controller. 
So I'm going to say Alpus make, and this time it's a controller, and then the name of your controller, which is going to be project controller. Okay, great. I'm going to close this, and we're going to open project controller. So we need to add an actual route. Let's go to our routes file. And we want to do that under here. So there's this command here, register, or command, sorry. There's a comment here saying register, register more web routes here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So our route is going to be get, and then we're going to say slash projects. And then the name of the controller uh, function that's going to handle this route. So in our case, that's the project controller. And then we want to call the index function. Okay, great. And I'm actually also going to add a name here as well. So I'm going to say that this is going to be projects dot list. So the reason I'm adding a name is because it makes it easy to refer to this route in our code. Um, and the nice thing is that we can change the actual URL later on the path and not have to refactor everywhere where it's called. So that's why we're using a name um, here. Okay, so I'm going to save this. And let's go ahead and run the application and see if um, our if we successfully configured our route to call our controller function. So I'm going to run yarn watch because I'll be adding view stuff later on in this lesson, so I might as well get that started. Um, and then the next thing is we need to go to start and go ahead and say debug. Awesome, so we have Alpus. Um, this is our fireplace screen that was already here. Now let's see what that new route is doing. So the route is slash projects. And it says hello project controller and that's because inside our project controller we're just saying call reply, hello, project controller. So that's working. Awesome. But what I really want to happen is to actually display all of my projects. So in order to do that, we need a view file. So let's add one of those now. So I need to add a template, which if you'll remember from a couple lessons ago, we're going to go to resources, templates. And I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to go new, pebble template, and I want to call this project underscore list. Okay, so this is an empty view, which is fine. And then in project controller, I want to display the view. Well, another name for display in this case is going to be render. So. We actually want to get rid of this call.reply and what we want to do instead is call.render and then the name of our view template, which in this case um, is project underscore list. And we don't need to add the .peb extension because Alpus knows that we are using the Pebble template engine. So it's going to take care of that for us. All right, so if we save this and restart, it should render a blank page. So let's see if that happens. There you go, it's a blank page, but we know it's actually loading and rendering our view, which is great. All right, so let's go back to our project controller. And remember I said that we want to pass our projects to our view so they can be rendered. So let's add that call now. So I'm going to save a variable. I'm going to call it projects. 
and that's going to be equal to projects, which is the, um, and then dot find all. So if we go to projects, this is that migrating table we saw earlier and we set up earlier. So now we're saying find all of the projects and we want to pass that to our view. So the way you're going to do that is say map of, and then whatever you want the view to refer to this object as, and we're going to call it projects, and then two projects. So this project refers to our, um, the variable name we picked here. It looks like I have a typo in there, of course. Okay, so now we're going to pass projects to the template. Let's actually update our template to show projects. Okay, so in order to make these videos not take forever, um, I'm not gonna cover any CSS, HTML, or JavaScript in this series. I'll point out things if there's something interesting or noteworthy, um, but in general, we're not really gonna cover it. For styling, we're gonna use Tailwind CSS, and later on for client-side interactivity, we'll be using JavaScript and some Vue.js. Um, so, like I said, in order to save time, I'm just going to paste this code in and save it. And now, let's see if that works. Let's run this again. We get a new view, and it says, oh, there's no projects, but this is good. This is um, trying to do something, and it knows that we don't have any projects. So, I'm going to add some really quick manually to our database. Later on in this video, we're going to actually create a route and create a way to do it through fireplace but for right now so we can see it working I'm gonna add some manually to the database okay so I've added some to our database let's go and look at it in the browser and see okay great so projects are being displayed and that's where we're gonna wrap up for today so today we created a project entity table and migration and we added a route to display our projects in the next video, we're going to be implementing this button right here. So we'll be adding a route to create a new project from Fireplace. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.